in a world of confusion, lies, and stupidity, just one man has the facts. Actually, a, a lot of people have facts. Facts that will reveal how the world really works. Yeah, and save people time and money and probably their life. Don't forget to mention that. Being <laughs> Less Stupid is also the first series to appear simultaneously on YouTube, Vimeo, Dailymotion, Vidme, Facebook, and Twitter. Be Less Stupid. Like the Facebook page to get new episodes every morning in your timeline. Or twice a week. Uh, maybe three times. Welcome to Be Less Stupid, the show for people interested in knowing how the world really works. Today, the results of a wine tasting experiment where I tricked 40 people from my wife's office. And it's all brought to you by the new Star Wars movie, Rogue One, which uh, I think Disney really cheaped out on. Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. Look, uh, I'm still gonna see it, uh, but that's just because I love bagpipes. Moving on. This is part two of our look at decision making. Today, the effect that too little or too much information has on your subconscious when you make decisions. When you've got too much information to process in order to make a decision, the brain doesn't know what to prioritize, which can often result in you making no decisions at all. And no decision can have a pretty bad future consequence. Let me give you an example. A famous 2004 study at Columbia University studied a group of workers offered a new 401k. The more options these participants were offered, the fewer people signed up for pension plans. Even worse than that, those who did make a choice often made bad choices whose options had worse returns. Even worser than that, the people who didn't have money when they got old were more likely to smother their parents with a pillow in order to get their inheritance. I may have made that last part up. More recently, I went to the supermarket to pick up a jar of spaghetti sauce. Did you know that ragu makes nearly 30 varieties? So many options. I felt like Charlie Sheen during his manic phase when he got to the chicken ranch in Nevada. There weren't just three or four prostitutes in the welcome lineup, like when the Walmart big rig operator with a fistful of truck stop lambskin condoms comes in wearing that official boob inspector t-shirt. No, no way. For Charlie, it was an Olive Garden endless bowl of prostitutes where any girl within 100 miles who sells sex is on display. They can smell his wallet from space. The point is, all I wanted was a jar of tomato sauce. Prego had 20 varieties, Classico too. So much information, too many options, sensory overload, could not compute. So I just ran home and uh, ordered a pizza, topped with a uh, pepperoni and uh, extra Valium. Conversely, an absence of information when making decisions is also problematic. The human brain has adapted over millions of years, except for Donald Trump's, whose brain, according to science, is comparable to that of a poop-throwing chimp on a good day, uh, Gary Busey uh, on a bad day. Those of us whose brains have adapted tend to perform less well in situations high in ambiguity, uh, which the brain interprets as chaos and uncertainty. And in the absence of a complete picture, our brains tend to make a series of instantaneous assumptions to give us a fuller picture. In other words, when situations are murky, our subconscious just makes shit up, which pisses off Brian Williams, uh, because that's his job. Those assumptions might be good evolutionarily, uh, but the fuller picture they paint can also be just, in fact, less true. Let me give you an example. Our ancestors who heard a rattle in the bushes and went, oh fuck, tiger, uh, well, they lived to pass along their genes because the consequence of running away scared was their survival. Our ancestors who heard a rustle in the breeze and went, yup, sounds like there's a breeze over in the bushes. Uh, well, they eventually became uh, tiger meat. To demonstrate what effect too little information has, I threw a party for my wife's birthday, invited her office colleagues, 
then asked them to sample three varieties of wine. I gave them very little information, just that there was a cheap bottle, a medium priced one, and an expensive bottle. I instructed everyone to write down what they thought of each wine. Now, here's what they didn't know. All the wine was from the same jug of Carlo Rossi, which retails for about $6 a jug. According to Carlo Rossi's online reviews, it pairs nicely with anything ladled onto a prison cafeteria tray. And its aroma has hints of a cherry, grape, Hoboken, and a slaughterhouse dumpster fire located next door to an old age home. You know, cause uh, old people smell bad. And yet, here's some samples of people's comments. First, bottle number one, which was labeled as the cheapest. Here's their thoughts on bottle number two, which was the medium priced bottle. And here's their thoughts on bottle number three, which I labeled as the most expensive. Okay, so now, what explains the results? Why did people largely dislike the cheap wine in favor of the one that was most expensive? Other than the fact that uh, those idiots from my wife's office uh, don't know shit about wine. Remember what I said earlier about the brain just making stuff up in the absence of information? Well, in this case, all I gave people was the name of the wine and the price of the bottle. There weren't other bottles in a similar price range. There wasn't a huge display to compare labels or countries of origin. No online reviews or recommendations. Also, you should know that, quite frankly, uh, most wine just tastes the same. Anyway, so what their brains did and what your brains would do when there's uncertainty is just subconsciously make some instantaneous assumptions. One, that the expensive wine is better tasting, more complex, made from better grapes. So ergo, it tastes better because as we've been told, things that are more expensive are in fact better. Conversely, the people from my wife's office also assumed that the cheap bottle tasted like crap because, well, as we've been told, cheap things are of lesser quality. So, how can you be less stupid? In situations where you don't have enough information to make a good decision, be aware of your limited resources. Don't drop $1,000 on a new 75-inch TV at Costco just because it also comes with a blowjob. That's it for this episode of Be Less Stupid. Remember, if you enjoyed it, please like our page, not just this post, you have to like the page. And that way you will get new episodes in your Facebook timeline two to three times a week. Yeah, probably more like two times a week. Anyway, thanks for watching, be less stupid. And remember, like our page if you enjoyed this show. Thanks very much, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time on Be Less Stupid.